It is one of the few remaining monarchies in the world. Nicknamed the Mountain Kingdom, Lesotho's multiple peaks scrape the sky at 11,000 feet. Completely surrounded by the Republic of South Africa, its combined landmass is only slightly larger than the state of Maryland. But although Lesotho is one of the world's smallest countries, today it is saddled with one of its largest problems. Since the 1980s, the HIV AIDS virus gradually overtook the Mountain Kingdom. And now, at 27%, it has the third highest infection rate in the world. Evelyn, a women's support group leader, fears extinction. I feel very bad, very bad and scared. Lesotho, the, uh, the poor country, and a small country like ours, is a fat in the world. That is the third, just imagine, one, two, three, in the whole world is the mostly affected. So I'm scared because I realize that in a few years to time, unless we work hard to work for these young people, and we shall have no pursuit here. Otherwise, this country can, will be taken by the other tribe. In 1984, the average Basutu life expectancy was 70 years old. Today, the HIV AIDS pandemic has drugged the national average down to 40. It came gradually and slowly without realizing. Everyone was healthy, healthy, even healthy. We never even thought, think that it would happen. We are getting an entire generation that is being wiped out. The scope of this epidemic is broad. Today we have 33 million people infected in the world. Out of them, 22 million are in the South Sah Saharan Africa. This epidemic is killing the people in the prime of their lives. So, young people. Then those people who are infected, many of them die and we are losing teachers and nurses and workers in, in, in the different industries. And that affects very much the economy of the country, very, very much. The labor force is dying. It's the young adults that have been the hardest hit, mothers and fathers. And now thousands of orphans are being cared for by aging grandmothers and grandfathers, often too weak to provide for their new dependents. I get you Gauteg is a mine located in South Africa. Because of the high unemployment rate, 50%, Many men will leave their families to work in the mines of South Africa for months at a time. It is there that many become infected, bringing the disease back to their family units. I <laughs> You find that not many people are willing to come out and because of that the infection tends to propagate and um, they are afraid to seek help because of um, they feel others will look down upon them and so it's one area that we really need to, to work hard on because it's, although people may be aware of services that are available, but because they are afraid of what others will say, then they don't come out in the open. Two years ago, Sarah and Peter's father was diagnosed with AIDS. He is unable to work. <laughs> I'm going to go to the hospital. 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 I'm going
Now, if the parent dies, only the grandmother's that is also weak, the grandmothers that are hungry, the grandmothers that are tired, the grandmothers that are sick also for their age, now they are the ones that are suffering. Now we have, we, are try, we want to try to train these ones so that while they are still young, they can take over and to, to train and to take care of themselves. Today in Lesotho, 10% of people are suffering from major depression there's a huge need for mental health uh, for the orphans. Daniel Binus has come to Lesotho to assess the mental health needs of the Basotho people. Through a series of interviews, Daniel and his team discovered that the prevalence of mental illness was much higher than anticipated, especially with orphans. Mm -hmm. They are hungry. They are hungry. So if you can give them some food to eat, and they are hard workers. The mind and the body are very much connected, and you can't separate the two. A lot of people are not getting the physical needs met, and because of that, their emotional part of them is often suffering. You can see it's too early to one, but it's still putting it on. You see, the problem is the money, how to buy food for them, but we are trying our best. It's so important to get first hand information from uh, the grandmothers, from the people of the community, the orphans themselves, to understand what would be 
helpful for them? Because often we come with an idea from our Western culture and we say, oh yeah, this would work and this is what we should do, but maybe that wouldn't help be helpful at all. And so we, what we really want to do is understand what is helpful for you and what's going to be helpful in the context of your culture. <laughs> Orphan children face a number of setbacks. Public schools are not evenly distributed throughout Lesotho, so many families must pay private school fees. For orphans, this is an impossibility. If the local public school is beyond walking distance, orphans simply do not receive an education. <laughs> How if a child can look after another child? What does that mean? It means that we are in a dilemma. The prevalence of mental health issues in developing countries is just as high as anywhere else in the world, uh, but it it's often neglected and overshadowed by the burden of infectious disease. What I think is really important for people to understand is that uh, mental health in uh, developing countries is an extremely important aspect of uh, healthcare. Work for orphans is scarce, and those who do are often taken advantage of. In order to survive, Samuel and James decided to start a club for orphans. About 20 of them meet each day to water and cultivate a small garden on a borrowed piece of land. Since they started the group, Samuel and James have become best friends. Samuel thinks less of suicide, although he can't imagine life without James. We are trying to build the gap between the, the youth and the adults because there's a big gap. We wanted to unite with our youth so that we can be able to counsel them because they, are, they, they, they don't know many things in life. So, but the grandmothers, they know. They can be good counselors to tell them what to do and what not to do. The 50% unemployment rate prevents many of these grandmothers from finding work. Instead, they must resort to gardens to provide food for their new families. But some of these women are 80 years old, and working outside all day long is out of the question. These ladies are the grandmothers that are coming from all different villages. They are the ones that are, are doing the best. Thank you, dear. Thank you, I love you. Evelyn has gathered these grandmothers and over the next week will teach them how to make Vaseline ointment from boiling vats of petroleum jelly, a task much easier on the back.
We have realized the, 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 the need of the grandmothers, that they should be empowered, they should be honored, they should be comforted, they should be trained, given some skills as, as to what to do when the situation is like this. Evelyn has been relatively unaffected by the pandemic. None of her immediate family members have died, but few of these grandmothers can say the same. Miriam lost her husband, their family's sole provider, in 2008. Oh, my Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> Finances concern Miriam the most. For the past two years, her son has been trying to find a job. So far, no luck. No success. Life is very different than when Miriam was a child. Over the past three decades, she has seen the epidemic completely change her country's demographic. Although Miriam is in relatively good shape, she looks forward to Evelyn's Vaseline workshop. Miriam plans on using the money for food and clothes. Several days pass and the shipment of petroleum jelly from South Africa has not yet arrived. Evelyn is concerned and sends a man to investigate. The information she receives sends her reeling. We found out that the driver was shot dead by those thieves. The vehicle is gone. Everything, whether they are still investigating the whereabouts of the money or the, 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 the petroleum jelly, because they are still finding how, how the vehicle and the, 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 the petroleum, whatever that was in the vehicle because they are still investigating. But this is a tragedy, because uh, we were so hopeful that uh, Anyhow, and I feel bad also for, for the family of that man who has lost life.
on our behalf because he was going to help us. I, I, I don't know his family and I don't know how would the family feel like. They realize that their beloved one is dead. It's a tragedy. I think that we shall, after that, I shall have to get the information. When I got the information, I shall have to go and see that family. Even for the funeral, we have to. As for the, we shall hear more about them. You have seen that the interest of the grandmothers, that most of them, they were anxious and interested to come for the vessel program. Not only is the driver dead, but the petroleum jelly, an entire year's worth of savings, is also gone. It's really hard. I'll tell you, I've been personally hit. I've lost four members of my closest family to HIV AIDS. I have one that is affected right now. And so it is hard. I know there are many others that are affected. And so that's why I have this need to say, we can do something about it. If not me as an individual, at least let me tell all the others that are not yet infected that we can beat this thing. Together we can. We are still fighting the basic things related to this epidemic, which are uh, stigma. People are now receiving treatments, but they don't have food to eat. So they are lacking the very basics, I mean, food and clean water. So yes, they receive the treatment, but they don't have anything to eat. We have done surveys in different countries where we ask for the five, most important needs, and food always come the first. Although effective medications for HIV AIDS patients now exist, funding from developed countries has decreased over the past year. But this isn't stopping Evelyn. We are working together uh, to unite ourselves to fight this pandemic, HIV and AIDS, poverty and hunger that is killing our child. We want to fight this pandemic. By God's grace. We as a church, we have an obligation that we cannot fail. And we need to do something about it. We need to, 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 to participate more in the community. We need to be seen going out from the church. It's not just staying within the church, in that comfort zone, in that bubble where we are very comfortable to live. We need to go out and minister to the people. Earlier that year, several churches from the United States donated a small sum of money to the Grandmothers Club. Evelyn is now breaking ground on a community center for the grandmothers and the orphans in her district. We are going to learn here, we are going to train here our young ones, we are going to make some income generating, we are going to do the counseling, we are going to work with our, we are going to fight this pandemic, AIDS and the poverty. This is going to, to be a very great work because we don't have any place, anywhere where we can make it, whatever. We don't have anything. I want uh, them to be changed, to be empowered because most of them, as you can see, regardless of the poverty, and the starvation, hunger. This pandemic has affected them very much because of losing their children, uh, taking care of their grandchildren. When they come here, they shall be comforted. When they leave this place, they leave it happily, smiling. <laughs>
next week on Loma Linda 360. They live in one of the most beautiful places on earth. They grow the richest fruits and sustain the environment they live in. They love their family, their friends, and Mother Earth. There aren't any roads, aren't any cars, just the river that connects them to the rest of the world. But the Amazon doesn't have it all. Some villages have no electricity, no school, no doctor, no pharmacy, no running water, not even a bathroom. They lack the opportunities and resources that you and I have. That's where Loma Linda University and you come in. Embark on a journey of a lifetime it's all about changing lives, their lives, and your life. Eu estou passando por uma dificuldade ruim de recursos que eu não tenho. Né? Ah, o Felipe lá, o jeito dele, todo o tempo continua nessa mesma situação, né? Porque ele tem problema no coração, então. E não é que nem os outros, os outros brincam, jogam bola e ele fica sempre parado. Então pra gente é um... Foi bom isso aí. Isso aí foi Deus que mandou pra gente. Their potential is huge, it's just a matter of, you know, having the right resources.